early spring in the year of the vigilant Pekingese, and the whole continent breathes a sigh of relief as the snow melts and the sun starts to shine again. There is some rain in the north, but otherwise the whole month is fine and dry. Marshal Ritter of Zurin has approved some building works around Dormouse to clear rubble and restore the city's thoroughfares. There has been a small explosion in the Zurinese city of Bowerhill. A workshop and a nearby stable were destroyed. There are no reports of casualties. A grand celebration has been held in Vakovahugel to celebrate the release of the last Zurinese prisoners from the late last war. Not Prince Albrecht, of course, but the people of the northern desert city are delighted that peace is fully restored. West Thuiban light cavalry have been playing havoc with loyalist supply lines around Prat Platkov. Panella's army has been delayed in marching this season. Crimsonian and Manathian forces have marched on Radka and placed the city under siege. The city has impressive works and is resisting strongly. Crimsonian light cavalry have raided south of the Ublikon River to cut supply lines and scout, but have been repulsed by Tip Left Nazine riders. Pro democracy revolutionaries have been arrested in Enitan. The regime of the Grand Duchesses seems to be very secure. A group of Ublikon partisans have attacked the Crimsonian forces laying siege to Radka, but have been captured by roving Manathian patrols. The tip left Nazine city of Norbina has been attacked and captured by a force of ferals. A vast horde of bats have come out of the mountains and western forest. This is in clear violation of ancient treaty between civilization and the ferals. There are engineering works underway in Port Harabi and Port Cleveland, Manath. Both cities are improving their harbours and shipbuilding capacity. An explosion in Beskim, Dunbarra, has been blamed on a kook with a weird scar. A workshop and adjacent stable have been destroyed. Several mice have been injured with burns and scalding. In western Maustria, loyalist peasants have felled trees and broken bridges to disrupt the march of Camembert's corps. A number of royalist troopers have been taken prisoner by roving bands and handed over to Gudarian's forces for bounties. In the Fetke Gap, a royalist fort garrison has changed sides, raising the flag of the loyalists in exchange for an outrageous bribe. Loyalist forces have entered the Bergkaiser from the north, unopposed. Loyalist forces have entered Garland from the west, unopposed. Burgundii forces have arrived at Kyoto, preparing to lay siege to the fort. Then some royalist forces arrive as well. There is a skirmish on the outskirts of the city. Both sides are completely made up of militia, and the royalists are able to attack effectively, pushing the Burgundii forces to the south and breaking the siege. In the second week of the month, at Ziegel, a force of 10,000 Burgundii militia is approaching the city when they are suddenly and viciously attacked by the royalist forces of Pigafetta and the West Thuiban mercenary force under Field Marshal Amin. The militia are outgunned, outtrained, outhorsed, and outgeneraled. Three Burgundii militia brigades are destroyed. The survivors flee to the south, and the royalist and West Thuiban army pursue them, south of Ziegel, and utterly destroy them. The army has arrived at Montgrun and places the city under siege. At Backstone, royalist forces hold the city under siege. A fort has been destroyed. Three remain to protect the city. Penella's loyalist and polyglot army of mercenaries have reached Milbukeza and placed the city under siege. Milbukeza holds for the royalist cause. Decimus's loyalist corps has marched to engage the delayed corps of Camembert, but Gamalos's royalist corps is marching north from Backstone. Both armies see each other and take a day to form up in defensive lines. The true size of the royalist force becomes clearer, and Decimaus makes plans to withdraw. Gamalost orders an attack, but somehow the orders are muddled, and in the confusion Decimaus is able to retreat north and west. This continues for the rest of the month, with Gamalost marching to attack and Decimaus successfully withdrawing towards Hurtenkaiser. Meanwhile, Camembert has marched the Bergkaiser, recapturing it, and returning it to royalist control. The loyalist force that took the Bergkaiser has marched through the Fetka Gap and destroyed a royalist supply depot. It is now mid-spring, in the year of the vigilant Pekingese. Mid-spring is marked by three weeks of rain in the south, limiting movement. The north is entirely fine. In Stilwen, a small group of well-funded citizens have attempted to launch a new political party favouring closer relations with Berdane. Unfortunately, all of these citizens have outrageous accents and ridiculous moustaches. The Berdane is Great Party has not gained any delegates in municipal elections. At Radka, Ublico, a very long siege by Crimsonia and Manath has led to the loss of one fort. Three remain. Inside Radka, a group of armed democratic partisans have led an uprising, which has led to the destruction of another fort. Two remain. Manathian patrols guarding the northern flank of the besieging army have accidentally fired on each other. Several mice have been wounded, including a particularly feisty midship mouse. Loyalist agents have raided Gamalos Corps' supply lines, but have utterly failed, being captured by cavalry patrols. Loyalist forces have laid siege to Milbukeza. There must be some gifted engineers among the polyglot armies. The fort falls after just a week. Milbukeza has been captured. 
At Quiota, a force of Brigandi militia have attacked Royalist militia defending the city. There is a lot of smoke and shouting, but in the end the Brigandi are forced to retreat. Neither side has taken many casualties. Adon has fallen to a force of Loyalist militia. The Royalist squadron in the harbour has been forced to leave the port. Rauchkaiser has been occupied by Royalist forces. The Royalist siege of Backstein continues without much sign of success. Three forts remain to guard the city. Grand Duchess Maria Patrona gives a speech to the council and diplomats in Mariegeburg on the war as a misfortune for the nation of Maustria. The catty behaviour of some states and of Prince Stepka as the initiator of the civil war is condemned. And with Maustria fighting in wars all over the country, the last great peace has been broken and we are all in conflict with the ferals. We have to step back from the edge of destruction before Maustum dooms itself. A royalist and Westerweben army under Pig of Feder has approached Milberkeza before pulling back to defend Ziegel. The loyalist forces with the polyglot contingents under Panella have pushed onwards. Pig of Feder has ordered a withdrawal, being severely outnumbered. The Loyalists have pursued and inflicted losses on the Royalist cause. It is now late spring in the year of the vigilant Pekingese. The weather is almost perfect, with only a week of rain in both north and south. The Crimsonian siege of Radkas stretched into another month. One fort has fallen, and one remains to protect the city. The garrison of the Radka fort have surrendered to Manath in exchange for a generous subsidy. Radka has fallen to the Allied army. Camembert has led an assault on a Loyalist fort in the Fetka Gap. It is a bloodbath, but the fort falls after a determined attack. A royalist raiding party was successful in disrupting Decimaus's corps march, but the Decimaus's own cavalry is successful in countering the effort. The royalist army laying siege to Backstein has had great success. Two forts have fallen to siege works, while another has surrendered and marched out with their colours. Backstein has fallen to royalist forces. Tip left Nazine has launched a new university, inviting scholars and students from all over Mouse Ropa to gather and study the natural world. The birthday of Lorenzo the Magnificent, Lord of Trentus, has been celebrated throughout that land with great public feasts. The fortifications around Marigeburg are now complete. The city is ringed by an impressive set of defences. Countess Maria Patrona has declared that she will not leave the city or its citizens, come what may. Medinji is now home to a renovated warehouse and market square, improving the city's prosperity. There has been another unexplained explosion in Bower Hill. No casualties reported. A loyalist force has crossed the Crimsonian border and is laying siege to Erag. The city's defences have held. A Brigandii force has arrived at Siegel, which is currently held by the loyalists. The city is defended by a single fort. The Burdanese mercenary cheese company has spent some weeks pursuing Camembert's corps through the Fetka Gap and run headfirst into Gamalos corps marching the other way. The Burdanese are able to withdraw, though it is a close-run thing. It is now early summer of the year of the vigilant Pekingese. An early summer is marked by a heat wave in the north. Three weeks of hot and one of very hot weather. In the south there is one week of hot weather. Movement is halved in the north. A pro burdanese political party in Stilwan has gained some success in municipal elections. There are city improvements in Doolan, Crimsonia, and Krasny and Vindholm in Badane. There are city improvements in Manchego, Manath. Crimsonian scouts have gotten lost in Ublico and end up reporting their own columns as those of the enemy. A survey has been conducted among the citizens of Manath to measure support for the prince and quality of life. Only 11% of respondents report being somewhat happy or more. On closer inspection, the company hired only pollsters with extremely poor personal hygiene. Fury in the camp of Decimaus as plans for a rapid march have been upset by poor staff work. Some baggage has been misplaced and opportunities squandered. A loyalist force of militia laying siege to Erag has surrendered to a royalist force that was cutting its supply lines before a force of Crimsonian militia could arrive to destroy them. A loyalist force of militia has taken the city of Rauchkaiser, restoring it to loyalist control. A force of Tip Left Nazin mounted musicians has taken to riding near enemy lines each night to practice their drums and extremely bad trumpet playing. The Crimsonian cavalry pickets have set a bounty on every drummer captured. A royalist force has taken a don from the loyalists. Reinforcements for the Westerweben mercenaries have arrived in Adon. A cadre of Westerweben cavalry officers have graduated from the Tip Left Nazin Cavalry School. Although both nations have opposing mercenary forces in the Maustrian Civil War, the two remain on cordial and cooperative terms. A Burgundii army has arrived at the Royalist-controlled city of Quiota. The city is defended by a fort. A Royalist army commanded by Camembert has arrived at Ziegenkaiser and begun sieging the city. Gamelos Royalist Corps have assaulted a fort in the Fetka Gap, taking terrible casualties before marching on to Milberkaiser. The city is defended by two forts, but Gamelos is able to use his expert knowledge of the city to capture both forts easily and without casualties. The Loyalist militia defending the city have surrendered.
The Crimsonian Manath army has marched from Radka to Marijaburg and briefly put the city under siege, but the royalist Dunbaran Tiplef Nazine force marching from Prat Platkov threatens their supply lines, so Black Cheddar orders the force to fall back to Redka. There have been some cavalry skirmishing south of the river, but the army has withdrawn without serious incident. It is now midsummer in the year of the Vigilant Pekingese.